Okay, here's my final thoughts. The thing which concerns me the most is the fact that the, um, well, practically the so-called, uh, oh, sorry, let's try, uh, again, as I said now, um, again, there were suspicions about the Halliburton uh, rigged elections. Like I said, there was a great amount of controversy, and you know, it's fairly, it's fairly pretty well uh, ascertained that there was, uh, you know, a lot of uh, scandal going on in Florida uh, during the first presidential election, you know, that the uh, stuff was rigged. And here's a reminder. Remember that every one of the, of the scrutineers who, who counted all the votes in Florida were all Republican. So Bush probably stole the elect, you know, the, the corporate, uh, you know, Bush and his backers um, probably stole the president, first presidential election. They probably rigged the second one to a certain extent, both publicly and not so much. Again, it's probability. And the thing, of course, is, though, is that, um, now maybe it's just me being an Aspie, but I'm notoriously distrustful of government. So here's my suspicion. Here's my proposal. Um, start talking to uh, fellow, st fellow Americans and start seriously thinking about a constitutional convention. If you can man and if um, if a constitutional convention is called, uh, review the current status of the constitution in the American government, and if it's determined that it's become dictatorial and that de revolution is required, do so. Um, if nothing, if not, and if it turns out that everything's fine, leave it be. But I strongly suspect. But I would at least um, like to suggest the idea of, uh, you know, in all seriousness, of uh, trying to, you know, at least trying to take a look at the option of that because of the fact that well. Again, if, um, you know, if there's so, I mean, we have had, what, maybe five terrorist attacks? Uh, no, actually, no. Make that three terrorist attacks in, like, the past five years, of, you know, three, four terrorist attacks in the past seven years, uh, or six, seven years. I mean, we had the 9-11 attacks. Like, we had, we had the cluster of attacks there. We've had the London bombings. We've had the Basque bombings in Spain. And I think that's it. That, to, to the best of my knowledge, those are the only three terrorist attacks that we've had in um, or maybe two in London and one in Spain. But the thing is, like I said, I think that that was about it. Like we've only had about three, maybe four rounds of terrorist attacks total. I mean, you know, do we really need this amped up security? I'll give you another example. In Canada, there was actually a group talking over the internet, uh, say, saying they were getting dissatisfied with Canada, uh, strongly dissatisfied, and they thought that a terrorist attack here in Canada would be appropriate in trying to deal with some of the current problems. These were all a bunch of Arab people. Uh, the RCMP, the local police department, actually watched them. You know, got uh, collected the evidence, collected the evidence. You know, checked their stuff, and then afterwards, uh, let them know that there was ammonium nitrate available if they so wanted it. You know, through a through an intermediary buyer. They took the bait and they got arrested. That was a sting operation. No need for entrapment. No need for monitoring uh, uh, your you know your your private email or what have you. This was chat rooms. It was all public domain. They used honest police work. And the only case that we've nearly had of terrorists in Canada, uh, you know, like I said, of these of these actual near terrorist attacks in Canada, the RCMP caught using honest, old-fashioned police work. You know, you, you see what I'm saying with this? The the necessity for half the, you know, it's one of the reasons that we voted out two of the um, shortly afterwards. It's one of the reasons that the government voted out two of the um, five major uh, points on the uh, Bill C, Section C36. Now the thing is, what occurs to me is that the FBI is still pretty powerful. They could check chat lines or other stuff like that, you know. I mean, the thing is that they don't technically need to monitor all the email, uh, you know, or, or, sorry, rephrase that. They don't need a large chunk of the, uh, of the holding indefinitely without parole or stuff like that, like a large chunk of this anti-terrorist legislation. Hell, if in Canada we were able to use honest police work, shouldn't similar something be able to be used down in the U.S. and the Patriot Act not be as necessary as it is right now, uh, as, it, um, as, you know, as it's currently phrased? But this is my point. The thing is that I suspect overall... And this is just my own personal suspicion. Uh, again, pure speculation, pure suspicion. But I suspect that the American government is actually headed towards a dictatorial system. Uh, you know, I, again, I strongly suspect this. And I would strongly advocate, uh, again, a constitutional convention to review the situation uh, by, you know, of the American people. And if it turns out that, you know, uh, given all the best evidence that can be found, you know, again, scurry all the evidence, all the documentation, everything. And if it turns out that there is a new world order trying to emerge and that there is a dictatorship coming up, revolt. Get the army on side once they come back from Iraq. And, uh, you know, if and when they come back from Iraq. And those soldiers that are there, um, get them on side and overthrow the American government. If it turns out to be necessary. Again, and then put in a fresh constitution, which would, you know, a fresh constitution, a fresh government. Again, note that I'm not actually advocating revolution right now. I want to be perfectly clear on this, and if the, uh, and again, pardon me for being paranoid, but if CSIS or the CIA are watching this, um, 
uh, and of course, uh, same, uh, simultaneously, I would also recommend for Canada, if any Canadians are watching this, a, uh, a promotion of trying to get a, uh, the government, uh, if you will, uh, sorry, the Canadian government, if you will, to, uh, or, you know, 10 of the provinces, 7 of the 10 provinces to approve a constitutional change, again, to prevent, uh, to take out these sort of uh, legislations that we've currently got with the terrorist stuff, considering that honest police work happened, and that, hell, in Canada, we've never had a terrorist attack, so, you know, just keep track of the borders, but otherwise be fine, you know. I mean, hell. We're in a position right now where we've got a more powerful dollar than the Americans. We've got, you know, a large chunk of newer industries coming up and stuff like that. You know, um, you know, I mean, if they shut down the border, it won't be as detrimental to us. It may, it may be, it may take, we may take a dent, but we'll still be doing okay. Um, I mean, here's the thing: like, just let's not worry about it. Let's, you know, you know, cons Canada would recommend a full constitutional uh, uh, amendment change, you know, what have you, using the seven tenths uh, clause in the uh, in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Or sorry, no, just the Canadian Constitution, the constitutional lending process. Um, for the U.S., I would recommend a constitutional convention to assess the situation. And um, depending on how things work out, um, if the uh, if the constitution uh, constitutional convention turns out that the current government is dictatorial, scrap the current uh, scrap the old constitution and bring in a fresh one within perfectly legal channels. And if the government that is still in power tries to uh, proclaim you as being treasonous for doing this, you are within your rights by American law to do so. Um, at which point the government has become dictatorial and is no longer serving the uh, democratic needs of your country. And the reason I'm uh, uh, suggesting this for the U.S. is that, remember, Canada is your younger brother. Uh, is Effectively, we take a younger brother stance to you. Regardless of, the, of whatever we may try to do and our, dis, our own uh, dis, uh, you know, worries about uh, stuff, we will attempt... Um, Whatever you guys end up taking as the uh, as the precautionary step, we will end up taking to a lesser degree. Now, the thing, of course, is though, is that um, there are concerns again for most of us Canadians. If the U.S. becomes dictatorial, uh, Canada uh, again is in a very precarious position, and we lose democracy or lose practically all but democracy uh, pretty well afterwards. So we can't afford dictatorship or an oligarchy down in the U.S. Now, we're not trying to tell you how to run our business, but please do bear in mind your little brother up here. Is uh, is you know uh, will follow your example, and uh, we don't want to be uh, following a bad example if possible. So um, we're asking you to please show um, the de uh, the democratic standard that you have for the better part of three centuries, and um, uh, call a constitutional convention and take a look to see if the uh, democratic system is actually failing uh, down there. Because if it is, um, it may be time for a fresh one. Again, I'd like to say for the FBI, the CIA, uh, the uh, um, NCIA, uh, NSA, uh, CSIS, RCMP, anybody who's watching this or, or monitoring my videos or what have you, again, I'm not proposing revolution right off the bat, and I'm not proposing the overthrow of the American government, and I'm no by, I am by no means supporting terrorism. What I am supporting is a constitutional convention in the U.S. and revolution if it is necessary, i.e. if the current government has become, uh, has become uh, dictatorial. Of course, if it has become dictatorial, I suspect you'll be trying to arrest me anyway for, uh, for having spoken this. Um, or if you're dictatorial and not wanting to get caught, you'll leave me per be perfectly fine, uh, much like if you're not dictatorial at all. Uh, but anyway, here's my point. Um, a constitutional convention in the U.S. and revolution, if it is necessary, and up in Canada, uh, trying to maintain a constitutional amendment uh, to um, to prevent laws from the, like the C-36 uh, going uh, from being passed, um, and possibly even taking out the War Measures Act, or or just going directly to war the War Measures Act. Like you know, if there is an emergency in the state of Canada, go with the War Measures Act. Don't go with subtle stuff like Section C-36. You know, be specific. Be specific about why it is necessary, and give evidence to demonstrate this to the public. You know, be, you know, and I think that's the overall thing. Give evidence. Remember that in the war in Iraq, Bush claimed that there were weapons of mass destruction. None have been found. If he was just simply going over there to uh, take out uh, Hussa the Saddam Hussein, uh, who is a, r a ruthless dictator and oppressing his people, which would have been a good idea, why didn't he just say so in the first place? But anyway, you get my idea. Again, constitutional convention, deem if it's now, deem, uh, again, uh, revolution if it is deemed necessary by the American people. And as for Canada, a constitutional change um, and, uh, you know, constitutional amendment process. And uh, again, using the same process, assess the current situation. And if it turns out that the Canadian government ends up becoming dictatorial, I would advocate revolution under the same context, again, after using legal processes to determine if it is necessary. But again, that's just my call for it. Just call for a review board. That's it. After that, whatever Americans and Canadians do afterwards, that's entirely up to you. I've said my piece. Anyway, my next blog will probably be on uh, something pertaining to Asperger's and social uh, deficits, that sort of thing. See ya!